Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. It's time for another video tutorial. Today we're going to be checking out Car VQ by Killer Hearts. This is a 31 band graphic equalizer. And in this video tutorial, we're going to be checking out specifically the match tool. It's right here and it's absolutely phenomenal. What the match tool does is what you think it would do. It will match the EQ curve of your current project to a number of pre-recorded projects or a sidechain project, or you can even just import a track into the EQ and it will analyze it and then you can use that EQ curve. And it's all incredible and we're gonna do all three of those methods right now. So the first thing we need to do is jump into the EQ match tool, which is this one right here, okay? The sculpt tool is kind of the default, but we want this one. There's also a reference tool, which is similar, but a little bit different. But like I said, match tool today. So the first thing we need to do is record a profile, an EQ profile of the song we have. So it's best to use kind of the drop is what the kids are calling it nowadays and just kind of record that full drop. And that's kind of the EQ profile of your track. You don't want to record a breakdown because that's not really your track. It is part of your track, obviously, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. The beef of your track is probably what you want to record for your profile. So that's what I've done here. I've got the final hook or chorus, as it were, and I'm going to record it. So I'm going to hit record, and then I'm going to play this all the way through and let the EQ curve kind of balance itself out. So let's do that. Okay, so now I've got this green check mark, and that means CarVQ has successfully recorded an EQ profile. Next, we need to choose the target. We've got sidechain, which we're gonna talk about in a second. We have a create profile from file, and we're gonna do that in a second. But first, I wanna check out these factory profiles. These are essentially the team of Kilohertz have created profiles from popular music. So if I come in here, and one thing that's really, really cool is I can use the arrows on my keyboard. As you can see here, I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard down, left, right, everything is working and it just saves time to run through these until you, until you find something you like. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and play the track and use the arrows on my keyboard to listen through these different profiles. And you might notice some of these titles here, Regulate, obviously, Lose Yourself, and so on for the hip-hop category. Obviously, hip-hop isn't this track, so these might not fit the best, maybe house, but maybe I want to use my own profiles. So let's talk about different ways to do this. But before we do that, I want to point out that let's say I choose Anyway. I then have control over the detail of the EQ profile, and just as a kind of helpful hint, you wanna usually keep these pretty general because as you start boosting different points, you're actually boosting harmonics here. And if like down here, if your baseline of your track you're EQing isn't in this harmonic, which if you hover over and look down here at the bottom, it'll actually tell you where that is. It's about an E2 on the scale. If you don't have an E2 or E is outside of the scale of your track, boosting that frequency is gonna cause issues. So just in general, you're gonna wanna keep this pretty um, average. And you can also t turn down or boost the amount with the amount knob. And if you want to invert for whatever reason, you could do that as well. And if you want to apply it to the stereo signal, just turn on the stereo one right here. But as I said, let's check out a different way to import our own tracks. So for target, I'm going to come down here to create profile from track. And here I have some tracks that sound the way I want this particular track to sound. So I'm just going to click and drag one in or double click. So let's say vocal pop track five here double click, look how fast it analyzes it. It gives me the average EQ curve. I say, okay, and boom. Now that average EQ is applied here and let's listen to what it sounds like. And an easy way to do that is to use the AB up here. So A is obviously with the EQ curve, B is without. So let's check it out. All 
All right, so that's got me pretty close to where I wanna be. And obviously I have the other tools inside of Carve EQ to make this a better profile to fit my track a little bit more. And you know, I like what it's doing up here in the mid to high frequencies, but this low cut isn't really doing it for me. So I could easily come in and remove that with the other tools. Now, the third way to do it is having a sidechain signal. In my personal opinion, just going ahead and creating a profile from a file by clicking, just you know, double clicking a track and having it analyzed real quick is an easier method, but sidechain is a way to, for you to do it if you wanna do it. So I'm gonna choose sidechain, and inside of my Ableton Live here, I've got a second track. I wanna send that track into this EQ. So the way to do that in Ableton Live is where it says it's outputting to master. I wanna to output to channel one. Second drop down, I wanna go ahead and send it into the Carve EQ. Now I've already recorded the EQ profile for my main track, but now I need to record the EQ profile for my sidechain track. So what I'm gonna do is first play it to make sure I can see that the sidechain signal is coming in. And you see those dotted lines? That's the sidechain signal coming in. So now all I have to do is hit the record button and let that play out for about the same amount of time. And remember, as I said before, you want the drop to be what you're taking the profile of. So I'm just gonna move it over to make sure it fills up that entire space, hit record and let it play. Hit stop, and now I've got my EQ curve here. And this is actually looking a lot better than that other one. So let's go ahead and AB it, and again, adjust the detail and amount sliders to see what we can do and see if it sounds better. and boom goes the dynamite. So that's three different methods of using the match tool inside of the Carve EQ. This is an incredibly powerful EQ. Uh, there's a lot of other features in here that I didn't go over in this video. I highly suggest checking it out. It's definitely an EQ that's worth having in your toolbox. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.